you are going to your better place. You better say a good amen. No? God is changing your level. He's changing your family level. Whatever you wear last year is not what you will be this year. Positively, you are changing level. Financially, you are changing level. Career-wise, you are changing level. You will surely get to your new dawn. You will not struggle to get to your new dawn. By the hand of the Lord, you will enter your new dawn. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. It is my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, shall be the order of the day in my life. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Put those hands together for the Lord and please be seated. Praise God. Before we forget, let me say it. Immediately they finish, the pastor comes to take call to worship. Drumming, stop. Everything should be done decently and what? In order. Canaan land is our picture. Are you what I'm saying now? Uh -huh. You must not try to carve out your own thing. We follow pattern. We follow an order. The moment you come, it's not for the local drum being to be breathing and the person will be doing a, a dancing acrobat. That's the moment you the person cut land. Banyoko. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? <laughs> if not, I will carry microphone. And if I carry microphone. You may not drum again. Praise God. Say, I hear. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Please do everything possible to get the tape of the first service. It will help you this 2018. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Until you are guided by God... You may not enter your new dawn. That is why in this 21 day prayer and fasting, only those that desire his guidance can see the reality of the things he has declared. Said again in the first service, naturally man is stubborn. Naturally. He will want to do his own thing. He want to go his own way. But you can't go your own way and expect God to go your way. No. God is not going your way. You are the one that will follow his way. You don't have way. No man has way. Jesus said, I am the way. Every other person is a passenger. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So you must follow his way. And until you follow his way, you never meet your blessing. Ninety percent of our struggle in life is because we want to do things our way. Go and check it. Ninety percent of our struggle, mammoth struggle, is a lie. There is a place for hard work. Hard work and struggle is not the same thing. Hard work and struggle is not the same thing. So don't be confused that uh, man must struggle. Struggle, hey, you don't carry evil load. And you know, Satan can give you the impression that yes, you are struggling, you are struggling. He don't give you firewood to carry in the dream. So please, I beg you, Subscribe to God's leading so that it can be well with you this year.
Wherever God leads, God goes. As he's leading you, he's going ahead of you to make the crooked places straight. To break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron and open before the, the two leaf gates. I don't want to struggle. Though. That's why I must follow the way of our spiritual fathers. What is God saying? What is God saying? Even if I can't hear correctly, so I want you to pray for me. This is what is going on now in my life. This is what is going on now in my family. I need your counsel. Don't be like the foolish that will say, you are anointed, I'm anointed. Hear me? No matter how anointed you are, there's someone that is more anointed than you. So there's someone that can see better than you. So please. There was a time, Pastor Sam and me, they were to start a construction. Well designed. In fact, you can't fault that architectural design. They brought it to Papa. Papa used red biro, scattered it in there. You almost felt offended. But the wife said, Shevi, you want guidance. Why are you angry? Not knowing that those things he corrected saved him from danger. So please, I beg you, at every face, at every level, please seek guidance. No one is a graduate in the school of divine guidance. Because scripture said the ways of the Lord, they are parts finding out. If you reach a place, it will still show you another one. You are still going. It will still be showing. But if you fail that you have graduated, it will just quietly leave you alone. It's a graduate of guidance. Guidance and counseling. May you not be caught in that trap. In Jesus' mighty name. In this second service, still in our series, maximizing the blessedness of fasting and prayer, our focus is on breaking the yoke of satanic oppression and affliction. Deliverance, please use that word. Deliverance from satanic oppression and affliction. Isaiah 10 and verse 27. Isaiah 10 and verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from, thy from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and thy yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Satan is an oppressor. Satan is a tormentor. One unique thing this fasting will do in your life is to take away the burden of oppression. I want you to know that oppression is a torment. It torments people. It torments the body. It torments the mind. It also torments the spirit.
your spirit can be tormented. And if care is not taken, it will get to the point of mental disorder. You begin to talk out of sense. Some challenges are sponsored. And when they come upon you, it looks as if you want to break into pieces. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness. So fasting and prayer brings us to the point where the bands of the wicked are lifted up from our lives. So every time we are engaged in a fast, one thing God will do in your life is to take away the burden of oppression. The burden of oppression. Sickness is an oppression of the devil. Once you are ignorant about it, he oppresses you, torments you, brings fear into your life. You will die. This sickness will take you. You will not be able to walk again. Torment. But scripture says, you shall serve the Lord, your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water, and he will take sickness from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young and the number of the days will fulfill. You can't serve God and serve sickness. You can't serve God and remain in oppression. Or this daughter of Abraham be free, whom Satan has bound this many years. Hear me? You must desire deliverance. Now, desiring deliverance does not mean that um, evil spirit is uh, possessing you. There are unseen forces that works against you. So you must be delivered from them. In Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. And the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. So no sickness is permitted to take your life. No affliction is permitted to devour your destiny. You better say a good amen. amen. But you must believe God that you must be free from it. Some people have been so tortured to the point that they now accept it as their portion. How can you accept evil as your portion? Do you know a yoke of delay can become an oppression? A yoke of delay, delay marriage, can become an oppression. You now become a prayer project. A yoke of delay and conception can become an oppression. It can lead to torment. A yoke of delay and financial breakthrough can become an, an oppression. The person will not be feeling poverty. Do you know you can feel poverty? Feel poverty. Think poverty. Sleep poverty. Wear poverty. So oppression manifests in different faces. Hmm. 
So there are many things God will deliver you from. Lack of promotion can become an oppression. Oh, you don't know? When no one is making progress in your family, it can become an oppression to you. I've seen it. So, oppression has different forms of manifestations in different people's lives. When things are not working or prospering or flourishing the way you want or desire it to be, it can become an oppression. To the point that you are now thinking Stagnation is normal. That God allows it. That in fact God allows it before he will move you to the next phase. God punish that devil. How can you accept that? Things are not working and you are comfortable. But I want you to hear something. I heard this from Bishop Abuye. In warfare, there is no mercy. What you don't hate, you can't fight. Anything you tolerate is permitted to remain. In warfare, there is no mercy. Whatever you can't tolerate, you will fight it. If you don't fight oppression, you remain oppressed. The worst form of oppression is spiritual oppression. Because if you are oppressed spiritually, it will show physically. I remember one young man, he said he saw himself crying that he failed in exam and that it has happened before and that he was sure that this one that has happened in the dream that he will fail. So I said, if you are sure you will fail, yeah, go. Go, come on, get out of my office. I like that stuff because I, I will harass you first so that you must believe that the prayer must work. Because no deliverance works without the person's consent. So I harassed him. He said, no, pastor, I want you to pray. I don't want to feel again. I said, now say with your mouth that it will not work. He said, it will not work. I said, okay, I will pray now. Scripture says, God is the pen. He said, my tongue is the pen of the ready writer. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And I've heard Papa say that God has the biro of correction. So I prayed the prayer. I knew it was a witchcraft manipulation. There are forces that vow that he will not succeed. They wanted him to repeat the class. There is no enchantment against Judah. Neither is there any divination against Israel. Wherever this programming took place, I nullify it right now. I decree upon your head you will succeed. Any evil handwriting that have come upon your paper, by the blood of Jesus, I decree correction. Amen. He was shocked that he passed. He said, Pastor, I couldn't believe it. 
I say, idiot. I say, even after I finished praying, you still, you still didn't believe it. At times, I abuse people to, to make their head correct. So. Yes. How can you say you didn't believe that the prayer will work? So I was wasting my time. Am I the one that answered prayer? If God answers it, glory to God. The glory does not come to me. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? It doesn't come to me. So I know he will answer it. So I will pray. Don't embrace oppression. If not, it will grow to bondage. Fighting in this kingdom is not a choice. It's a must. So it means a must. You know, we are used to saying, I'm not looking for anybody's trouble. Though. And so nobody's looking for my trouble. But I want to let you know, whether you are looking for anybody's trouble or you are not looking for anybody's trouble, somebody's looking for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? Good. I like the way Pastor Jeremy said, he said, no matter how you start from here now, greet everybody here, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. You face this choir side, bless you, bless you, bless you. You bless everybody. Somebody still doesn't like your face. Someone will still have one bad thing to say about you. But it's not important. Everybody is entitled to opinion. You are licensed to say any jargon you want to say. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But let it not be an obstruction to your blessing. If not, the person will carry trouble. He said, we recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So fighting in this kingdom is not a choice, it's a must. Jesus said, I've come to set fire. Why? There are blessings that will not enter your hand until you react violently. Since the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by what? Force. If you don't fight oppression, you remain in stagnation. You must fight it. You remain in stagnation if you don't fight oppression. To the point it will become a normal torment. You wake up, the thought engulfs you. You are on your road. The, the thought engulfs you. You get to where you are going, the thought engulfs you. Man, you are under bondage. The bondage. Jesus, in dealing with sickness, the tormented, he was a fighter. That's why you can't be gentle in this kingdom and possess your possession. No way. Gentility is an enemy of blessing. I've not seen any gentleman that takes a, a blessing. Every gentleman will always be cheated. He doesn't like talking. Collect it, boo. He, he won't talk. Am I saying the truth? He won't talk. Collect it. They say, where is this person? Home? Because if I take, I ain't no go talk. You no go do anything. So they will always be looking for your own to take. Come and take my own now. I will pack sand and curse you. I will speak to the air and curse you. You must release it.
I want you to hear this. You determine when your oppression ends. You determine it when your oppression will end. When will your oppression end? Good. When will your oppression end? In every fight, nobody thinks of losing. Everybody is thinking of winning. Who have watched boxing before? The boxers, even though they are paid, each of them is paid. Is anybody thinking of losing? What is thinking of losing? So why will you be thinking of losing? Why will you be thinking of losing? That is why in this fasting and prayer, you can decide the outcome. How do I know? He that cometh to God must believe. If you are coming to God in this 21 day prayer and fasting, you must believe God. Lord, I have been oppressed enough. I have suffered enough. I have seen enough attack. Even the ones I cannot define. It's enough. You never do. I remember one prayer, Apostle Suleiman prayed. Oh Lord, answer my prayer. Let me rest. Who like that prayer? You like that prayer? Oh Lord, answer my prayer. Let me rest. I don't tire. Abba. He said it humorously. Oh Lord, answer my prayer. Let me rest. And God answered the prayer. So you don't think of losing. You don't feel that your enemy will win over you. You don't feel it. Even if you lost before, you wouldn't lose this time. Amen. Say it better. Amen. Amen. You are bound to fight and win, not to fight and lose. That's why scripture says, fight the good fight of faith. What makes it a good fight? What makes it a good fight? What is the power behind the oppression? So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish and prosper in the thing wheresoever I send it. Whatever is behind my hardship, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, I command your destruction. Whoever is sponsoring my bondage, I command you to die. God will kill the person. Oh, you don't know? He said, declare now that thou mightest be justified. He said again, I will do the very thing that I hear you say. And I've discovered something until you react. God never acts. Every act of God is in response to our reaction. Every act of God. When blind Bartimaeus was tired of being a beggar, he has been used to But that particular day, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. That was not the usual cry. Am I correct? That was not the usual cry. Beggars have a true of plenty of marries. They are not as begging them. When they are you angry them, they will carry their home and run it. True of 
that particular day was different. He said, I'm tired of this beg. Jesus, have mercy. He said, Do you want? Jesus was not whether he wanted money so that he could uh, juice the thief. Give him money. I'm saying that. That's why, no matter what you are, God will stick to you. What do you want? What do you want? Listen from what? And believe me from what? You must define what you want. And people that can't define, can't find. You must define your deliverance. Is it deliverance from lack? Is it deliverance from rejection? Is it deliverance from disappointment? Is it deliverance from delay? You must define it. Is it deliverance from failure? You must define it. You must define it. What do you want? That I may have my sight. Shall I say this? Many in church, let me say 90%, need deliverance from blindness. Many are looking, few are seen. We have many visionless people in church. You need deliverance from blindness. It's new dawn. In which area? This year is my new dawn. Pastor. Pastor Mike. God said it all. This year is my new dawn. I will allow you to wrestle. Professor, I knew dawn among my life. <laughs> Should I tell you something? What is now? I see the rod of an almond tree. He said, Thou as well seen. He said, I will haste him my word to do what? Perform it. You need deliverance. I remember one sister who came one day and said, Pastor, enough is enough. It was a day before Shiloh. I have gone through 13 marital disappointments. He said, I'm tired. God should do something. He said, I'm tired. Before I would take any wrong step. I said, which wrong step? I said, talk, talk. I want to hear you. He said, I won't say anything. <laughs> I said, you only have two options. Either you go get there, or you just go down. He passed that to nothing. If die, kingdom continue. Two of us. But I say you must marry. Now, hear me. I re echo it again. Until you react, God never acts. Do you know immediately she reacted? Immediately she reacted. That she was not willing to take it again. The tide changed. In one month, somebody just appeared, an immigration officer. An immigration officer just appeared and said that uh, I'm not interested in boyfriend, girlfriend. I want to go and see your parents now. Who like that type? God bless my beginning. And God will answer their prayer. Amen. Believe what I've said. Say God will answer their prayer. Amen. The man said, I know my boyfriend, girlfriend. I want to see your parents now. This is what we call sharp, sharp. Cash and carry. Who wants cash and carry? Hear me and hear me well. This month, there will be a visitation for you. Yeah. But she reacted. She reacted. She reacted. Some people don't like to react. I've said it this year. Any devil that will try my path, I will kill you and go pro I will make progress. The kingdom will be going forward. I have enough harassment. I haven't, I've had enough embarrassment. Dear me this time. Let me invoke the eight graces against you. Let me see whether you will survive it. You have tolerated oppression enough. 
Do you know your pocket can be oppressed? And you hide from people. They are judging your responsibility. It's what we call financial oppression. Oh, you don't know poverty is a spirit? You think it's uh, manipulated by APC and uh, PDP? It's a lie. The money is not in their hand. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? It's not manipulated by APC or PDP. Because then when they collect the money, if they finish and come out from there, they will still be poor. They will still be poor. I've seen a local government chairman retired after his tenure was looking for welfare. He came to me and said, I won't give you. I won't give you. When you were making money, you knew fine, fine hotels and you were carrying fine, fine guests. Now you don't have money, you know how to come to church. How many do you have in the church? Get out! I told him point blank, I'll give you. Is what you saw, that's what you will read. Did you saw here that you want to come and rip here? Now there's no money in your pocket, now look at church. The, the welfare, did you keep any money here? <laughs> you have not paid tight in this church. You want to come and collect welfare? <laughs> Let me Lack of money is an oppression. Don't tolerate it. Do you know, if you are oppressed financially, there's what we call chain effect. Ripple effect. It will affect your wife. It will affect your children. It will affect your car. It will affect your storehouse. It will affect your pocket. Everything around you will affect it. That's why scripture said, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard? If you say it is too hard, that means you don't want God to change it. If you say it's not possible, it then means God cannot do it. You say one day, one day God will remember me. You will remember, you will remember like the man by the pool of Bethesda. Say God forbid. What God can do now, don't postpone it tomorrow. Proverbs 3, verse 27. Withhold not good from whom it is due, when it is in thy power of thy hand to act. He said, don't say to your neighbor, go and come tomorrow, when you have it right there with you. Can God change your story? Will it be more powerful tomorrow? No, it cannot be more powerful tomorrow. He said, I am the Lord, I change it not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not what? Consume. How can be consume? That, that sickness cannot end your life. You better say amen. amen. That oppression is coming to an end today. Amen. That attack is coming to an end today. Amen. There are others that go what we call marine attack. Marine oppression. I remember one star that came to worship with us in order then. She came from uh, uh, Mbiyama. They normally bring fish to that Mbiyama market that buys every Sunday. She said a snake comes to sleep with her on a bed. I said, Sleep with you? Are you snake? So I said, okay, I will give you something. I gave her this oil. I said, pour this oil on the bed. If this snake come again, don't come to this church again. Tell everybody you can meet that this pastor is a liar and a fake. I permit you to do that. Guess what? After that annoying service, give her the oil. The thing came, he couldn't enter the house. She was the one saying it to. So she now woke up consciously, not dream now. She now went and opened the door. She said she wanted to prove this thing. Hear me? You see this thing? You call it oil. 
But the scripture says, oil was poor, but the spirit of the Lord came. Every time the oil is poured, what comes? The spirit of the Lord. She said she couldn't believe it. It did not enter. It could not enter. It could not enter. So what she now did next? The next time she didn't finish oil, she now went and poured it round about her environment. The thing will come and stay far. She will now go and pour small again. The thing will stay far. <laughs> Let me tell you, these spirits, they are stubborn. I said, okay, now, the next thing you are going to do, you are going to cut it. Jesus said, Jesus cast the fig tree and the fig tree died. And the disciples said, Master, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered. He said, didn't I say unto you, thou shalt have faith like that of a mustard seed. Thou shalt say unto this man, go, and he shall go. He said, nevertheless, I say unto you, this kind goeth not, but by prayer and what? Fasting. Now, you have been bearing it and bearing it. Hear this. As you engage it in prayer, he said, in Luke 21 and verse 15, I give you a mouth and a wisdom with your adversary will not. Be. If you are my enemy, you can't resist my word. Which your adversary will not be able to resist, not gain say. You can't stop my theory word because I am joined here with God and joined here with Christ. So when I say it, he confirm it. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. Jeremiah 1 and verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build up and to do what? Plant. So whatever you don't want, you must uproot it. Sickness will not torment you again. You must uproot it today. That oppression will not continue in your life again today. See. See. I have set you. Which means as you declare it, God will confirm it. How many see the oppression in their life coming to an end? That's why part of your prayer today in this fasting, even though we are going to pray now, Lord, whatever has formed a stronghold of oppression in my life is fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge our floor and burn with unquenchable fire. You are going to pray very shortly, Holy Ghost. By your fire, sweep through my life. Whatever represents an oppression of the devil, financial oppression, marriage oppression, career oppression, stagnation in marriage, oh, consuming fire. He said, We purify the source of Levi. Lord, let your fire sweep through whatever God not planted that is tormenting, oppressing, and afflicting me. Let it be obtained. Rise up to your feet right now. Everybody rise to your feet. We are going to do something. Pastor, put the oil very fast. In case you came with an oil, bring out your oil. A spiritual snake is going to leave somebody's body after this prayer. I just had that just now. A spiritual snake is going to leave somebody's body after this prayer. There's another sister here you can't marry. Let me tell you why you can't marry. You have a serpent in your private part. All the people that have slept you have run away. If that serpent crosses today, there's no oil on this altar. But if you want to be delivered, pray with fervency in your heart. Something is going to come upon you right now and that serpent in your body 
we die today. I'm not saying tomorrow, today, today. Whoever fired an arrow of affliction against you by using any means, your deliverance is going to take place today. Anyone going through marital oppression, they are oppressing you. No, your husband is not making progress. You, you are not making progress. That yoke will be destroyed today. If you are saying amen, say better. Amen. It shall come to pass in that day that the body shall be taken away from thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. I said, because of the anointing, every yoke shall be destroyed. Shall be destroyed. Shall be destroyed. I see that yoke leaving you permanently. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. There's another person here. They vow that your hand cannot taste good. If I be a son of Oyeko, and I'm please sent to Lafia. As we begin to pray, the person that tied you will die in 24 hours. If you say an amen, say better amen. amen. I want everybody to partake of this oil, but we are going to pray. If you are not born again, everybody close your eyes. The first deliverance you need is deliverance from Satan. If a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things come to pass. All things are come to pass. And all things have become what? New. Wherever you are, see me. Put your right hand on your chest as I'm doing. And say after me, Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, just come right now because I'm going to anoint you. You are going to do your own prayer. You pray that prayer with me. Just come right now. Jesus quick, quick. is If you are coming, come. You don't have time to waste. Follow up today. Whenever you can take step right now, bro. Oh, just come back. There's no one. Jesus is the way. If you are to come with him, Jesus not time to waste your stuff. The answer. Follow up today. Oh, there's no one. Pass this oil, pass us. Holy Ghost, <laughs> by the consuming fire. Let no yoke survive the oil. Holy Ghost, by your power, invade every life. Whatever represents a yoke of oppression, a marine oppression, a witchcraft oppression. Attacking any destiny, let today mark the last day. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. As you take the oil, put it on your head right now and begin to pray. Spirit of God, let your fire burn every chaff, destroy every yoke. Whatever is make my life not to taste good, not to go forward. Let the yoke be destroyed. Lift up your voice and pray right now. Please do it very fast, pastors. Move very fast. Pass the oil quick. Pass the oil quick. Every yoke of oppression. Lero shakotane. Zeku kaprekle desosia. Inakoto. Jaku sinandre iletedia. Rezosa bekotli. Jekotara mendele dorosa. Le baro shaga dagada. Le baro shaga dagada. Reza nakla keto pekete. Shekotelia. Any yoke of oppression. Any yoke of bondage. Whatever legal hold the enemy has over me. Jesus. Holy Spirit. You are the youth destroyer. 
Let that yoke be destroyed. Let that yoke be destroyed. Lift up your voice and pray. Fire of God, sweep through my body, sweep in my spirit, sweep through my soul. Burn every chaff. 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 Legatarian de Lelioso. Enake Koto. Ligano Shagata. Isaketa. Nendo Ligata. Zeketo. Pegua Libro do Nasose. Legatorianda Badabarabada Badaba. Fire of God. Burn every chaff. Burn every chaff. Fire of God. Burn every chaff. Thou Spirit of God, sweep through my body, sweep through my soul, sweep through my spirit. Destroy whatever God has not planted. Lekete rosh and nake kude predo zizo naga daga daga ya. Le raketoni la rosha. Zeriande le rosh. Zeriande le rosh. Le rosh. Shaka laga daga 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 da. Fire of God, burn every chaff. Yoke the slayer. Destroy the yoke of the wicked. Destroy the manipulation of the enemy. Destroy the control of the wicked. That's marine power. That serpent. So in that sister. Die in the name of Jesus. Le rodododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododododod
2018, your heads will not break down. 2018, your heads will not break down. 2018, your name will answer to any devil. Any man or woman that dares and vow to shoot arrow at you between the next seven days, let them swell up and die. Whoever would take your name, the name of your wife, the name of your children, 